So this is a 2006 Audi A4, and as you can see, the check engine light is on, and what it feels like is it's skipping, it's misfiring. So what we're gonna do is I have the free app called Torque, and this is really good for checking codes. We'll click on the gear button, click on fault codes, and show logged faults. It'll request the fault codes from the ECU. You'll plug in, it's a, a Bluetooth adapter. This just goes into the OBD2, OBD2 port, and then this will send a Bluetooth signal back to the phone. So now if we take a look at the phone here, it says select fault code P0304. And if we click on that, it'll tell us what it is. It says that's a cylinder four misfire. As you can see, this says cylinder four misfire. So this is isolated just to one cylinder. It's a single misfire. And this is cylinder four right here. Now about a month ago, we were getting the same error code. So what we did was we took the coil pack from here, switched it to cylinder one, and you can see I wrote bad question mark and said this was on cylinder four. And we switched it to see if then the misfire would come to cylinder one, and then that would mean the coil pack is bad. But the spark plug was looking pretty bad. So we ordered new spark plugs, and this spark plug is bad. Now that we've isolated it to this cylinder, it's not the coil packs. The coil packs are good, so we need to replace the spark plugs. So this is the 2.0 T engine, so it has the four cylinders. Now to get the coil packs out, I took these two screws out here with a Torx bit, and now we can just slowly start trying to pry these up. And the plastic casing on the wires makes it a little tricky to get them, but once you get them started, they just come out a little easier. So then just slowly work all of them out. So I just got a bigger screwdriver and I'm working them out just slowly because this plastic coating on the wires, I think is, it looks nice, but whenever you actually have to take some of this stuff out, it just makes it harder. It just kind of starts splitting. It It's not, too great of an idea once you're trying to get this out unless you want to unplug it separately which is hard because it's plastic and there's not much room maneuverability but as you can see we're slowly able to work this up and then now these are coming out here we go now the coil packs are loose so we can lift all four of them up like that now we have access to the spark plug so there's basically three different types of spark plugs. You have the copper spark plugs, which are usually the cheapest. We got these on rockauto.com for about $1.11 per spark plug, which is really good. Then you have platinum and double platinum. Those are, you can see this one says double platinum. So the double platinums last a little bit longer than just the single platinums. And those are normally a little bit more expensive than the copper. And then you have the iridium spark plugs. These last the longest. You can see they have a little graph of how they last longer. But these on rockauto.com were about $4 and I think it was 17 cents. So that's a pretty good price on iridium spark plugs, but we'll go ahead and put these in the car. So now let's go ahead and take out cylinder number four, which is the one that was giving us a problem. And let's see what this spark plug looks like. Let's go ahead and pull it out and take a look. You can see that is a pretty corroded spark plug. So we keep track of which one is which, and then we'll take out the other three. Here's cylinder number three. You can see that one almost looks more corroded. That is really bad. These need replaced. Here's cylinder number two. You can see that one's also corroded, but not too bad. and cylinder number one. And that one isn't too bad either. So now we have all four of the spark plugs out and you can see all the conditions that they're in. One thing that's very important to check before you put these in the car is the length. If this is sticking down too far, if the threads are too long and it goes in too deep, this could be sticking out and the piston could come up and hit the spark plug and that could be pretty bad. Or if it's too short, it's gonna to be too far away from where the ignition needs to be, 
and it won't light the fuel mixture. So it's important that your spark plugs are identical to the old one. This socket here is kind of special. It has like a piece of foam down in the bottom. So when you put your spark plug in, it won't fall out because you definitely don't want to just take your spark plug and drop it down the hole because that'll change the gap right here, which is very important. So if you put it in the socket here, then we can slowly lower it down to the cylinder and then screw it in. So it's very important to always put the spark plugs in all the way by hand, because if you put these in with the ratchet, you have a lot of mechanical advantage on the threads and you could strip out the threads or cross thread them. And if you did that, you'd be in a big problem. Then you can go back through once they're all the way in with a ratchet and just snug them up. So since cylinder number four was the one giving us the problem, we'll do a compression test on it just to see if it produces good compression. We're just hoping it's the spark plugs because they're so corroded. We're hoping that's the problem. So if it's not getting good compression, then we know we have a bigger problem. It could be the head gasket or the valve. So now we're going to crank the engine just to see if it builds compression. If you're gonna be testing this a lot, it's a good idea to remove the fuel pump fuse so you're not gonna be pumping a bunch of fuel into, into the cylinder. This panel right here comes off and then under here is where all the fuses are. So normally you'd wanna do this test a few times, but we don't wanna keep pumping the fuel into the engine and it gave great compression this time. So this is looking Just really nice. push this button to release the pressure. And then we can go ahead and take this out and put the new spark plug in. This is one of those tools, it's just a necessity if you're gonna be working on cars. This will help you rule out if it's head gaskets or valves. So it's a pretty big deal to have this tool. You can get them at Harbor Freight for about $15. We've been using this one for years. So I'm glad to see that the compression is good, but now we can go ahead and put the last spark plug in and then we'll tighten all these down just a little bit and then we'll put the coil packs on. So now just tighten these down just a little bit, but not too much. So now we'll just go ahead and snug up the spark plugs. So if you were suspecting a bad coil pack, this test tester is a spark plug, um, has the spark plug end here. So you'll put this in the coil pack and this doesn't have the electrode. Now, what they used a long time ago was a, a um, spark plug, and if you use an old spark plug, even a weak spark can go between the electrode, and it wouldn't necessarily be powerful enough to ignite the fuel mixture. This has some resistance, so it has to have a lot of energy to be able to travel here to the metal. So if it's able to make it from there to there, it's a strong spark and passes the test. If it doesn't, it doesn't pass the test. So now we'll go ahead and plug this in. And then once it's in, we'll ground it to a piece of metal right there. So down there wasn't a very good spot. We put it up higher so we can actually see the spark. Now with the lights off, we should be able to see this spark a little better. So it sure seems like the coil packs are all fine. So we'll go ahead and take that tester out and put everything back together. It was pretty interesting how some of these others were actually firing off a spark too because they were also grounded. Maybe that's another way to do the test, but I know that tester works really well. So now we can go ahead and put these little screws in here. <laughs> Just be very careful not to drop them down into the engine. I've definitely done that before and it's a pain to get them out. So now we'll put all the uh, gingerbread back on. And that snaps on real easy. And now we'll take it for a test drive. So the check engine light should stay on, but hopefully it'll reset and realize that there's new spark plugs and it's not misfire. Check engine light's still on, but we may have to reset the codes, but hopefully it'll just reset on its own. We can go ahead and clear the codes. It felt much better. So we'll go to the menu, fault, fault codes, clear logged faults. Click OK. And now it just went through and cleared the fault codes. And if the car was on, you would see the check engine light disappear. So now we'll start the car. And you can see the check engine light disappears. 
So this car feels much better now. There's no hesitation. It doesn't skip. And those spark plugs really made it better. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.